So, just got this little red box in the mail from the fine folks over at Spark Fun Electronics. Let's see what comes inside. They sent me a few goodies. This is a soft pot. It's a pressure sensor, position sensor rather, which we're going to use in a future project. Here's a MIDI connector, memory card, and finally, Tsunami Super Wave Player. It comes in a sealed plastic bag. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Alright, so first things first, I'm gonna solder on some headers so I can try different ideas without damaging the pads. The Sparkfun Tsunami Super Wave Trigger is a very powerful board. You can play back thousands of stereo or mono CD quality audio files with up to 36 voice polyphony, 16 hardware trigger inputs, and 8 assignable audio outputs, as well as MIDI I.O., a serial connection, and an auxiliary stereo audio input. There's just so much you can do with it, from untethered octophonic sound art installations to a keyboard controlled Mellotron style sample player with ample polyphony, full MIDI velocity, envelope controls and pitch bend implementation. In the modular world, I think most wigglers would immediately think of using it as a drum module to be controlled by a sequencer. So I decided I wanted to break out all of its inputs and outputs to a Eurorack panel to make it easy to exploit all of the Tsunami's possibilities from within the modular framework. First, I set out to research and experiment with different ways to condition modular gate voltages to work well with the Tsunami's trigger inputs. The Tsunami is a 3.3 volt device, and sending it a higher voltage could be instantly fatal. Sparkfun do not replace boards due to user error, so be very careful with this. The Tsunami's trigger inputs can be activated either via a short to ground or a 3.3 volt positive gate. So I tried a few things, all of them around the basic idea of using an NPN transistor as a current activated switch, switching the trigger inputs either to ground or the internal 3.3 volt regulator. After some testing, I settled on the simplest circuit I could find. Just a resistor from the gate jack to the base of the NPN transistor, the Tsunami's trigger input on the collector, and ground on the emitter. This way any voltage high enough to activate the transistor will short the trigger input to ground, but never hit any of the inputs directly, thus preventing the board from being damaged by modular voltage levels. And it works! This is actually all the circuit we need for this project, but making a panel with 16 of these trigger inputs, 8 audio outputs and a MIDI input in the traditional DIY way it would be a nightmare. It would require a lot of wiring, maybe having the transistors and resistors on a separate piece of perf board and then somehow mounting the tsunami board to this mess. So really, the most efficient way to go about this would be to design a PCB to be connected to the tsunami via headers. This PCB would be where all the jacks, resistors and transistors would be soldered, and the copper traces and headers would make the connections to the Tsunami. Although this is a fairly simple PCB design task, I'm still slow with the CAD, so I decided to recruit the talents of my friend Konstantin Tokarev, the Russian. Konstantin lives in tight quarters with an enormous amount of stuff. It's truly a mess, but a creative one. Yeah, totally creative. The first thing we realized was that in order to make this PCB single-sided, which would simplify our prototyping, we needed to use SMD components instead of through holes. That's one small transistor. Konstantin had some reels of trannies and resistors, so we chose the 2N2222 as the NPN, and 47K was the closest value resistor he had to the 100K I had tested at home. So we made a little protoboard test rig to make sure these parts would work. Excellent! Then we started looking for a footprint for the kind of jacks I happen to have a lot of. No dice. So we measured the jack with a caliper and designed an approximated footprint which worked just fine. We then dove into EgoCAD, drew in the full schematics and started working out how to space everything so the jacks are even, the resistors and transistors don't get in the way, and there's room for all the needed traces to and from the headers. This took a bit of tinkering, but we got it. Next step was to actually fabricate the PCB. So we printed it on transfer paper, then proceeded to transfer it onto the copper using a hot iron and a laminating machine.
This proved an efficient method, the transfer turned out perfectly. So then we went ahead and covered it with ferric chloride and warm water and proceeded to stir it to etch it evenly and quickly. The board turned out perfect, so we went on to drilling it for all the jacks. We decided to surface mount the headers to save on drilling and the other components are all SMD, but still 25 jacks with 4 holes each that's a hundred holes. Constantine then soldered on all of the SMD components and the headers. I soldered on the jacks and we were done. But then, as we were testing it at 3 a.m., tired and unfocused, I slipped up and shorted 5 volts from the power pin to one of the trigger inputs, thus frying the tsunami immediately. What a heartbreak. After all the work we had devoted to the project, we couldn't test it because I and my clumsiness had broken the board. Let this be a lesson to all, be very careful with those trigger inputs. Nothing higher than 3.3 volts or you have a dead $75 board on your hands. Unboxing number two, Sparkfun were kind enough to send me a replacement for the board that I burned. I made it very clear that they normally don't do that. They don't replace boards for user error, only for a factory defect. Here we go. This time I did not solder the headers for the serial connection. If I ever decide to make an Arduino based companion module for this, I'll solder headers on the back so it's easy to connect both boards together. I also connected the power header facing the back and made an adapted Eurorack power cable for it. Snapped it on, tested, and our board worked perfectly as expected. So to really put it through some hoops, I sampled a bunch of loops and hits from one of my favorite albums, Thelonious Monk's Brilliant Corners. Then I programmed the four first trigger inputs to each cycle randomly over a range of samples. One for loops, two and three for drum hits, and four for horn and piano hits. Each of these categories routed through its own stereo output, which I ran into my mixer and added delay and panning. I then patched four random clocks on the modular and sent them to the four trigger inputs. And voila, instant automatic music concrete remix machine. I also made a panel for it, by hand because Constantine was busy and I was in a hurry, but it turned out fine. I'm now working on multi-sampling my cello, my trombone and my voice to make a Mellotron type bank, as well as my favorite modular percussion sounds for some drum banks. I just know I'll be using this module a lot. It's nice to be able to leave the computer or the tablet at home and do beats, samples, play polyphonic sampled instruments all from within the rack. I plan on making the image for this PCB available. As soon as it is, I'll update the video description with a link. If there's enough interest, who knows, we may even produce a run of these boards and panels. That's it. Please like and subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon. See you next week.